G'day and welcome to the Midweek Wrap. Good to see you. And uh, Midweek Wrap is where we stay connected and we think about an issue from a gospel perspective. And this last week I was sitting there and uh, I got a text message from a friend uh, with a, a YouTube clip. And it was Gary Ablett, my favourite footballer and probably the most famous AFL player uh, in history, uh, talking about Jesus, but also talking about conspiracy theories. And uh, he was talking about COVID. 19 and he was saying that uh, there is a conspiracy um, and and he began to talk about the Illuminati and he was saying that there's this plan to to destroy millions of people and to destroy the world's financial system and then he kept talking about Jesus again and it was all kind of strange and I really liked what he said about Jesus but some of the other stuff was it was right out there Ben. Mm, it's a uh, really interesting watch if you google um, or YouTube Gary Ablett if you haven't already um, but uh, we're going to come to that in a minute. First, we just wanted to flag a couple of things with you uh, coming up on the horizon. Just wanted to flag briefly the roadmap out that the, the Premier has released and how that fits with our plans for a church and what we can, can do and make the most of the different opportunities. So we just wanted to flag a couple of key dates. Um, at the moment, we can actually go and take a walk with someone. You can exercise with someone outside your household. So why not give someone a call and say, hey, you want to go for a walk, catch up, keep your distance, keep your mask on, all those things. But um, something you can do at the moment. Um, from the 28th this Sunday, there's not much changes with the current scheme at least, unless there's changes to that announced. But October 26th is another key date. So the, the end of October, we can start to meet in groups of 10. So we might have some men's events, women's events. You can catch up in a cafe or you yeah, can- Yeah, outdoor events. Outdoor, yeah, we can meet outdoors or we can catch up in a cafe in a group of 10. Maybe we can even book a second table in a second group or a different cafe, you know? So there's some opportunities we can make the most of coming up. October, November, and then November 29, put that one in your calendar because this is an exciting date. It may change, but at the moment, it's going to be an exciting date because that will be the Sunday we can meet in person as a church. Praise the Lord. At, uh, at and the Plenty Valley Christian College. At, so that's that's what we're aiming for, Lord willing. Yeah. So the 20 from at the moment, take a walk with a friend. Coming up, you can meet with 10 people. In November, we'll be able to um, meet as a church. So those are some exciting dates to look forward to. Yeah, the other thing that's coming up is we're thinking about the vision series and uh, the, the elders have been just working over the last little while on uh, a new vision statement and it's something that we, we're going to share uh, as a preliminary idea on this Sunday uh, and we'd like to get your feedback before we kind of adopt it as a church and say, yeah, this is ours. We'd just like to hear what people think about this. Uh, so, yeah, look out for that on Sunday morning. Yeah. And the youth... Yeah, so there's a few things coming up in term four. We're going to have our, our, our vision season, uh, which we do once a year, but also we've been talking about these youth changes and uh, The Sims is something you're going to be hearing a bit about. The Sims Senior Youth Meetings, uh, where our senior youth get together and think more deeply about becoming transitioning into adulthood as Christians and preparing for life outside of school and that sort of thing. So we've got a great team of leaders who are going to be heading that up. Um, thank you so much for those uh, leaders who are, who are serving our senior youth. And it's going to be a great chance for those guys to go deeper into the word and what it means to be part of God's family as adults um, serving and living for Jesus. Yeah, so back to this conspiracy theory. Mm. Um, who is behind COVID? Is there someone? Is there a grand conspiracy with COVID to destroy the world financial system, to, to bring widespread reduction in the population of the earth are there are there grand plans is there a deep state and how, how do we make sense of conspiracy theories ben well i mean there's we've got to have a a full picture we've got to include the the dna injections in the vaccines that going to give us all microchips that we can transmit and receive messages yeah um yeah some full-on pictures and it, it's easy to kind of caricature these things and um but it's also something we need to be alert to because they have real traction with people, don't they? And there's bits of truth in it. There's bits of truth. And I think the way they, they work is they kind of play on people's suspicion uh, that there might be something they're not aware of, take little little fragments of truth and then kind of shoehorn in some speculation to build this alternative kind of picture of reality that isn't really based on evidence or logic, but is based on speculation. Yeah. Um, and, and it kind of gains traction in a time when we really don't understand how COVID works fully yet. It's, it's a new virus and we're, and we're in very strange times. We're in lockdown, so we can't have the, the kind of normal conversations and getting together and, and mm. talking it through and kind of 
we're just hearing something I saw on social media or... And there is a kind of a, an underlying frustration and anger, I think, that there's yeah. kind of a fertile ground for implanting new ideas into. And we do feel that. We feel yeah. lonely and frustrated and depressed and some people are struggling with their, their businesses and so there's... A, there's yeah, it is fertile time for, for people to be angry and mm, mm. build on that. But there's, a, there's kind of a heart issue, which we're talking about, isn't there, Richard, that this yeah. plays into as well, is that we actually desire as, as human beings in, in our, our heart, it's kind of a, a sinful bent in us that we want to have a, have a position of insight and knowledge where people will come to us. Um, and you see, you see the human pride and desire for kind of um, influence. I've got the answers. And yeah, influence and respect and affirmation. If I, can, if I can have the answer and know the truth and point out the bad guys, um, that kind of lifts us up and makes us feel good about ourselves, doesn't it? Whereas yeah, there's, there's I, I an alternative... Reading. Um, to that in the gospel, isn't there, which we'll come to in a minute. Yeah, I was, I was reading um, recently that one of the leaders at Wheaton College in, uh, in Chicago about uh, how, how we think about uh, the mainstream media as Christian people because it, cause it's, it's actually right to be a little sceptical of the mainstream media in some ways. It's right for us to, to recognise that there is some exaggeration, that, that sometimes the media is, is fear-mongering. Occasionally they say things that are outright untrue, but... Generally, we, we ought not to dismiss the mainstream media. They do actually work hard to, to say things that are true, to do the careful investigative journalism. And so sometimes they say things uh, about the church and Christianity which are, are hard to hear, but sometimes true. And uh, we, need to, we need to be allowing ourselves to hear those things and hearing, I guess, a variety of, of media sources. So I, I'm someone who likes to listen to the ABC, not because I always agree with them, sometimes they drive me mad, but I, I respect that they work hard at their journalism and, uh, and, and sure they have their biases but I like to hear the voice of people I sometimes disagree with and think through what are they saying mm. something valid there and we could say the same about politics couldn't we or, or government is it's really easy to just be suspicious and cynical about governments and they're evil and they're trying to do the wrong thing whereas actually there's a lot of people who really there's, there's always mixed motivations but there's all, a lot of people who are genuinely just trying to serve their country and their people um, and, and better the, the community. And so the Bible actually gives us an approach to government and relating to, to politics that's both wary but respectful. Yeah. Uh, so in Romans, we're called to submit to the governing authorities. They're actually in place by God. But then, of course, that's written in a, in a world that's ruled by the Roman Empire at the time was a pagan um, and very anti-Christian organisation. So there's still a posture of deference and respect, but a discernment that says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust Jesus and listen to God and his word before I listen to the emperor. Um, so we, it's really easy to jump to extremes. The, 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 the government's evil, we need to oppose them. Or we love the government and everything about it is good. As Christians, we need to find this middle ground that says it's a good thing in place by God, but we need to be discerning and wary. And I think that posture is, can be shared with media as well, that there's and, something good and, there. And social media in particular has a way of uh, it, it's set up, designed to, to make it into an echo chamber. So you, you hear one perspective and you'll always hear perspectives that agree with you generally. Uh, it, the, the software is designed to do that. So it won't expose you to voices that are completely opposite to what maybe you've been listening to and enjoying. And that's mm. actually not that helpful for us. We need to hear voices that totally disagree with our perspective so we can think it through and go, oh, gee, I, hadn't th I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than just being reinforced in what we already think, yeah. But this, old, this, this idea that there's a secret knowledge, it's an old concept. It, it goes right back to the New Testament days uh, where there was, there's this thing called Gnosticism. Gnosticism is the idea that there's some secret knowledge uh, and if you have that, then you'll have the insight. And, and the Apostle Paul warns about it in Colossians chapter 2. Um, so he says in verse 8, he says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition, and the elemental forces of this world rather than on Christ. And so that idea that I, I want to have the secret insight, that, that's an old thing that, that taps into my heart. Mm. Um, and, it, and it says you, there's something more you need to know other than Jesus. Um, yes. that, that Jesus is good, but what you really need to find out is these extra bits of information that will take you to this deeper level. Um, whereas we also read in, in, in Colossians... Um, Paul says uh, they may have all the riches of complete understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ. And in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So there is a mystery, 
um, about God's, God's mind and his intention for history, but it's been revealed uh, in, in Christ and in the gospel. So in, um, in, throughout the New Testament, the word mystery comes up a lot, doesn't it? Mm. But it's something that was hidden, but has now been revealed in Christ. Yeah. So yes, there is a secret knowledge and you find it in looking at Jesus and in him, all the, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Uh, you find them in Christ. You find them not by looking outside for some new revelation, some new insight into what's happening. You find them by going deeper into Jesus and his word that we already have. Yeah. He goes on in that same verse. He says, I tell you this so no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. Uh, so, so let's be people who trust in Christ. Here's the, here's the treasure that, that, that really is, um, gives us the information we really need to understand life and make sense of it. Uh, mm. And he gives us the satisfaction uh, of, of real truth that's eternal. Mm. Because one of the dangers of a conspiracy theory is it actually distracts us from the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. Which is knowing, trusting, loving Jesus. And I think perhaps the most damaging thing about Gary Ablett's rant is that there's actually some gospel gold in there. There are some treasures of, of gospel wisdom, but it's, it comes shrouded in or mounted in this, this really weird, distracting, um, confusing, di redirecting um, message about these things that are happening in the world scheme, this, this, this um, conspiracy, these deep... Uh, um, powers that are at work, evil powers that are at work. Um, whereas really what we need to be on about is loving, serving Jesus, growing in godliness, um, sharing the gospel, making, making Christ known. And that's where we need to focus. Yeah. And I think that's a wrap. So um, we look forward to catching you next week. Keep an eye out for our new vision statement that we want to share with you and, and hear back from you. Keep an eye out for our, our Sims youth thing coming up and, and also Year Sixes. We've got to mention Year Sixes joining youth um, this term as well, fifth and of October, um, is that it? the fifth of October. Yeah. That's for well, well, the Monday. The, the senior youth, yeah, the senior I, youth. and the year um, sixes, and yep. the year sixes on the the Friday, and also those those key dates for um, getting together at church. Um, Ten people from the end of October, and church from the 29th of November. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. See you then.